<clears throat> Hello, and welcome to the presentation on Cosmosm. Cosmosm is a smart contracting platform built on the Wasm virtual machine and deployed in Cosmos SDK, designed to work with the Cosmos ecosystem. Therefore, Cosmos Wasm, Cosmosm. There is a website online, www.cosmosm.com, where you can read more on the architecture and go through a few tutorials. I will give a quick screen class as part of the Getting Started tutorial series. You can follow along at the website and click on the docs and then the tutorial. Here's the website and if you go on to get the docs, you can click down to the architecture to Getting Started, which will show the contract. The first contract is basically designed to take an existing escrow contract and modify it at a backdoor. So besides uh, releasing the funds or returning when the escrow times out, uh, it's also able to uh, steal the funds. So we will learn how to do that. And uh, you can go through this yourself, explaining the Rust basics, um, which will assume you have installed a Rust system, which I've been already, um, and a um, as well as an IDE, I'm using IntelliJ. In this case, I highly recommend it. Um, VS Code is nice. I use VS Code for much of my coding, uh, but I found the Rust plugin was slow and not so helpful. Mm, it was very complete, but it definitely did not miss some things. The Rust for IntelliJ has much more context, helpful information. So I recommend installing that and yeah, trying to learn how to use IntelliJ as well. It's free. Both are free. Uh, so basically, we'll follow through this page, editing the sample contract, showing you how to go through a contract and modify it. So without further ado, let's jump to the editor. Here's the editor, and I am going to go up here, and as I said, I will clone github.com confio cosmosm examples. Or I'll do mine. You can clone that one. All public. So that should work too. Um, there you are. So once you go here, go to Cosmosm examples, and just the escrow thing. We're going to open that in Cosmo in the IntelliJ editor in the escrow directory. Um, if you look in escrow directory. You'll see it has a cargo toml file at the top of a project. Uh, do the many IDEs working with Rust, you need to have this in the top directory. So just go ahead and open um, idea projects, examples, escrow, and I'll open this in the top window. Great. Um, now I'm here. So let's go through and you can see the source code. Um, the main thing to look at, uh, tar this explains how to use, uh, this kind of is an introduction of all the dependencies for Rust um, and telling you how to compile things. So it's generally your flags, your configuration. Inside source is where the cord is. Lib is a thin shim, uh, basically saying we expose init and handle and query uh, to uh, the VM on the WASM VM, there's also the WASM code, but the real contract code lies in contract. Um, this library stuff is basically auto generating for you, and the only thing you need to modify here is contract. This file is basically what you use. Um, you go through here, and we can see that basically you have three things. You have a NIT, which is creating a contract, handle, which is using a contract, and query, querying a contract for data. Query is undergoing a big overhaul, for the 06 and 07 releases, so we're not going to go into that too much. We'll just look at uh, init and handle, because that is what we need to modify state. Um, the init message is the information passed in when you initialize a contract. And you'll see that it takes the arbiter, the recipient, and the end uh, timeout and height of time. Um, this is available in the API. Notice that uh, the sender is not specified, that is automatically drawn from the parameters. That later, 
the parameters are basically, um, if you go to init function, you will see it takes a storage, which is uh, basically a read-write database, access to it, parameters, which are context, uh, your environment. Uh, it's going to be able to environment, actually, in many versions. Um, your environment, which is taking um, the signer, the contract address, the contract balance, uh, the current block height and time, various information is included here, and the message, which actually is from the user, and returns basically an error or a valid response. A response effectively contains a message, if you want to return messages to interact somehow. Um, so this is our interaction, this is our read from the environment, and this is a way of interacting. Read write, this is our storage. Um, so the init message is what we can initialize with. From, this comes from the user in JSON mode, and the handle message is what comes from on executing the contract. We can either approve it uh, either with a list of coins to release, or none if we release all coins. So it's an optional value. Option is used in Rust, an optional value, and this is a vec is a vector or list of coins. Um, or you can refund it. A refund means once it's expired, you can return it back to the original sender. So I'll look a little bit how this works. Uh, let's say we query, and this is state, which shows what we store in the data store. Um, and you'll see here that the source is just like the init message. The source is the original sender, and that's pulled automatically from it. And we add an is expired function on the state to say is expired. It compares its end height of set uh, to the parameters block height, which we get environment. And if the end time is set, it makes sure that the current time in the block is less than the specified timeout. If the end height is, is set and the block height is greater than the greater or equal to what we said, it's expired. Um, so let's go through. Um, initialization takes information and you see here every pull a source from the signer, message signer. Um, if it's expired, we error. And the way you error is basically set a custom error message, contract error, which takes a string, and call fail. If you want to create a dynamic string, you call it dying contract error. You do this. But for static errors, just use this one. Um, and then if it's good, you will store the data in the database. Um, it should be relatively simple. Um, this whole thing basically says parse the message, uh, create the state you want to store, check to see if it expired and then store it in the database. That's initializing. The handling goes through and parses the handle message, uh, loads the data from the data store. We only have one key, by the way. This is a config key. It's a simple contract. Um, and parse the state. So this gets the data from the database. Um, at this point, we then say we either get a proof message or a refund message. And it will then try to approve it or try to refund it based on the type of message. Approval. Uh, uses, you'll see unauthorized here, which is used to fail on access failures. If the parameter um, signer, so if the arbiter is not signed it, unless the signer is the arbiter, so you verify this, then you fail. If it's expired, you can't, uh, can't release it either. And if the arbiter signed it and it's not expired, then we release it. Um, if we didn't specify any coins, we use the entire balance. The contract balance is also in our environment parameters. Otherwise, we say how much. And the way we actually move coins is we return a message saying uh, send from the contract's address to the recipient account at the given amount. I hope that makes sense. Um, you'll see that we cannot call into the contracts as an actor model. And we go to a lot more in the in depth in the, um, in the documentation. So you can read about it, but basically you return a message to cause the dispatcher to do some more actions on your behalf, either call a handle message of another contract or to, to a send message to move tokens from one contract to another. This can be extended in the future, and we try to keep it minimal to ensure backers compatibility. Um, so that's how it goes. Refund, accordingly, is uh, will make sure it's expired, and even can call it. If the state is not expired, it's sort of rejected. If it is expired, then it will release the entire balance um, to the source. So the original funder gets all the money back if it never gets approved before the timeout. Uh, so hopefully this makes sense, and you can see how we do this in Rust. Uh, we go down a little more, and we can see the tests. These are all just standard Rust tests using config test, if you used before, and these are just unit tests. So those unit tests actually run in Rust. I'll show you running at one time. 
and then I'll take a break and the next video we will go into modifying this. Um, so what we want to do here is cargo WASM. We'll compile um, a WASM smart contract uh, and it will create a, a custom one. At that point we, it runs in release mode. Um, then you can also run a test on it and the test version will go through and run all the unit tests um, including integration tests. So you'll see this test module here. Um, there's also an integration test, which looks like um, similar to the existing ones in contract test. Uh, contract test actually um, just uses mock storage and are running in Rust. It's not using the WASM compiled code. It's using just store Rust code. Um, so you have the entire framework there. Anything you want to do, you can inspect it. Get full back traces, stack traces, everything in there. It's pretty powerful. It's a great way to verify that your code works as you test it. You can access um, non-public functions as well. So you can access internal functions. If I wanted to call directly uh, try approve, I can call it directly. Um, so that's that's totally there. What and once you've got this, you want to compile it onto Wasm image. An integration test will actually load up a, a virtual machine with that Wasm code, which we load from the compile point. We can take a optimized Wasm code and anything else we want to here, and we verify that in the actual virtual machine. It will run. So it doesn't all run a whole blockchain, just runs a virtual machine, instantiates it, and calls the entry point to the virtual machine. This ensures that we're passing proper types into and out of the virtual machine using the, um, when you pass vectors of U8 things and data out, in and out, if data can parse properly through the JSON. And the errors are properly reported, so that basically ensures that things, it's more of a sanity check. Um, you don't have to copy everything. I copy usually a positive case, not failure case here um, to make sure it works. So we've seen on the bottom that. This now has compiled WASM. And now we run cargo test. You can call it cargo unit test, which should be quick. Um, and that will just basically run the unit test, the pure Rust test. Um, you find here just these tests here. Um, it actually takes a while because we are installing all the dependencies from scratch now. And you check out. And this is going to run through all the unit tests in Rust. Once we have done that, we can then call test, a full test, which will include integration test as well, and verify this. Um, we can look at actually the difference between this digitization or handle approve, which goes through and it will basically create an init message, uh, create fake parameters. Uh, this creator is sending this much money at this height and then we'll call init with the object. Um, at this point we will then at this point, we're you know, sure that nothing happened. Then we'll call approve on it. Uh, for the beneficiary, the signer is there, and it should return error, unauthorized. We call it again with a verifier uh, signing it, and we call it this way. It will return uh, uh, expired, because actually we set the height to be too high, so it expired. And now we return it with a verifier one point before it expires, and we get success. Uh, we should actually unwrap success. We get make sure there's one message, and that one message is a send message from the contract to the beneficiary. Uh, so we can go through all this code and just standard, you know, um, nothing fancy. It's just standard, standard testing. Okay, so we finish the testing here. Um, this all passes. These are already passed. And we go to integration test. The same things happen, except we go through, and it's slightly different because we get strings now because you actually don't have the whole types classes anymore. It gets serialized as a string, and it comes out as a string contract error expired, escrow expired instead of um, this one here, contract error. An unauthorized error is now just turns into a string called unauthorized. So when you pass over the virtual machine boundary, you have to stringify it. So I'll do the full target test here, and that will verify that it actually compiles um, inside the virtual machine, runs that Wasm binary built, bytecode we built, and it'll run inside the virtual machine. This is the unit test. Go quickly. The text is slightly longer. Uh, running in the virtual machine debug mode, and you see it all passed as well. So we have a complete test here. Thank you very much. I will go down into the next version, and I will go into uh, looking at how to edit one.